Today I'm going to show you how I made this simple modern wine rack. First, I picked out some walnut. This that I'm using is four quarter stock and I rough cut the pieces on the miter saw. Then I took them over to the table saw and I ripped them down so that I can use my joiner to get one flat face. Then I took them over to the planer to bring the other face parallel to the flat one and then I resawed them at the band saw. I did all of this many more times since I had a lot of pieces needed for this build. I have all of my parts. I've resawed them all. So these are all the parts for the wine rack and I'm going to take them over to the planer and get them all consistent. I had to glue up some panels since my project called for nine and a half inch boards and I had previously cut them down to fit on my joiner. I have found that these parallel clamps give me the straightest and most consistent panels. Remember, don't clamp everything too hard. You just want the pressure across the entire joint to be very even. Well, I'm having to redo all of my panels for this wine rack. Um, by the time I got these cut, resawed, and glued back together, they were just way too thin. They ended up being less than 3 8 So I started over. I marked out where my slots needed to go. I was basically doing half lap joints to join all of them together and form little compartments. I taped these two together with just some painter's tape because my lines uh, for both of these pieces, these are my vertical pieces, um, I'm going to cut the same slots in both. So that way I'll just do them on my bandsaw at the same time. So as I was cutting this, I um, made my first cut with the bandsaw. It went fine. I, I left a little bit to the line so that I could make a homemade sanding stick and sand to my line. Uh, couldn't fit it through the other way. Didn't I guess didn't feel like transferring the line to my other side so I could flip my material and took it over to the table saw sled. and. Um, I knew that the blade being round on the table saw sled would make it come through uh, further on the back side. I thought I was stopping plenty short and I far overcut my material. It's supposed to end near here and I've got this big gouge out of it so now I'm going to have to recut boards and almost start over. So after remaking the boards again, this time for a third time, I cleaned up some of the slots that I had cut with a chisel, then a rasp, and some sandpaper. With all of these long slots, this was quite a puzzle to put together. We are getting there. It's starting to go together. I've got a little more finish sanding to do so that these aren't quite so tight when they're going in. Then I added a round over to the edges of the bottom piece. The top was the only piece that set exactly flush with the sides. The other side pieces set a little bit proud so that they would serve as a lip of somewhere to put the wine glasses. I wanted to use hard maple for the accent pieces, so I found some in the scrap bin and milled them to the right size. Using a sander, I rounded over the edges of the maple pieces. I attached most of these pieces using just glue. They would not have a lot of stress on them and I knew that would be enough to handle it. 
I used some dowel cutters to cut the dowel plugs. I used a few other types before this set and I didn't like them as well, so I will link below to these. To free the plugs, you can either use a flat screwdriver and just kind of pop them out of the hole, or you can use a bandsaw to cut just at the depth of the plug. Both work really well. I started laying out the places that I wanted to drill a countersunk hole so the plugs had enough room to seat properly. Then I used a very small drill bit to transfer and pre-drill the hole to the joining piece before driving in some screws. Occasionally, I would check for square as I assembled the final pieces. To secure the bottom, I actually just clamped it into place and did the counterboring by hand. I misdrilled one of the holes, and you'll see exactly where later in the video. Sometimes, you gotta just roll with it. To glue in the plugs, I just add a bit around the sides and tap them in. If you're not already, please subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. After the glue was dry, I flush cut the plugs and then finished them off by sanding them flush. I used a total of about three coats of clear spray lacquer and I sanded in between those coats with 320 grit sandpaper. I really like how this project turned out. If you would do anything differently, give me a suggestion. Let me know in the comments below and I appreciate you watching.